Hi everyone, Gustavs here. Today I'm going to show you one use case related with uh, field parameters. It's quite an uncommon one, and I think it's going to be like uh, useful in certain use cases. However, I think it's going to be helpful. So before diving into the solution itself, I would like to show you a few things regarding this report page, just to let you know what are we analyzing. So if we are looking at the table, we can see that we have a values for the previous year. We have the values for the actuals, the delta, the year over year growth uh, as an absolute values. We have the data bars for the absolute values. We have the percentage share for the previous year values and for the actuals. So we can compare what was the percentage distribution of our both the actuals and previous year values. So we can compare whether like the given segment or country or customer or, or whatever the row, row breakdown we have, what was the change in the distribution in the structure of the portfolio. Then we can also see the change in this share uh, metric uh, in the percentage points and we also have the data bars. We have a few uh, different uh, filters. We have the filters for the date selection is in that case the single select for the year, multi-select for the months. We also have the one slicer for the business lines and a few slicers here on the top of the table, which actually will be the most important for our today conversation. So this is like the basic uh, basic structure. Of course, you might Im you can imagine that you might have a completely different structure in the table. You can also analyze any other uh, breakdowns and other items you would like to analyze, like it might be like, like the products, for example. So in that case, we are analyzing the, the segments, countries or the customers or also in a combination if you would like to. However, you can imagine that in your case, it can be, uh, for example, the products and some kind of the attributes for, for these products. And one specific niche technique related with the field parameters that I would like to show you today is related with um, how we actually set up those field parameters in our slicers. So please take a look at the first slicer, which is called the row breakdown analysis. analysis. In that case, we can pick one specific breakdown. It can be segment, it can be country, it can be customer. So if we switch from the segment to the country, you can see that now in the row items, you can see only the countries. If you go to the customer, you can see the entire portfolio breakdown by customer. If you go one, once again to the segments, you can see the breakdown by the segment. And one additional thing that I would like to share today with you is the actually the second slicer, which is uh, called the road breakdown filter. Of course, it's, it can be named in any other way that suits your needs and your requirements. However, what it's all about in case of the slicer is uh, using a different uh, element here. So typically we just throw a few parameters. So let's say we have the, this row breakdown analysis, analysis slicer. And if we have already built one field parameter, I will quickly show you how it can look like. It's basically three elements like segment, country, customer with some additional columns at the end. These are like supplementals that will, it will serve us for different purposes, but we will dive a little bit more in a future meetings, in the future recordings. However, for today, conversation, I only would like to show you how this field parameter on a high level view is uh, is built. So we just regarding this slicer, we just let's say I will remove that and we can just simply drag this field parameter here. So you can now change from the segment country customer. So exactly as we had in at the beginning of our meeting. But here, if we have the secondary slicer, which is row breakdown filter, it's built using a one additional uh, element. In that case, if we right click on a field row breakdown, it's our main field parameter, you can see that it's actually activated one additional thing. So basically, if I click in this, in this, this, in this one once again, you can see that now it's called show values of selected field, and we can actually click on that. But I won't be using this element. I won't check this element here, but I would like to use it here. So if I won't use it here, you can just see the names of the field parameters, which in that case is the segment, country, or the customer. It's now only visible one because it's cross-filtering. That one and that one are now cross-filtering, but it's not the case. But what I would like to achieve is that if I right-click on the field parameter and I will uh, activate the option, which is called show values of selected field, you can see that now we see all the elements which like includes 
as, which are included in the segment. So let's go to the country, let's say, and we, now you can see that there are all countries which belong to the country column, to the country field. If you go to the customer, you can see that automatically, assuming that we have the active interaction between the road breakdown analysis filter and the road breakdown uh, filter, that one, you can see that now we have the full list of all available elements which belongs to the customer. If we go to the segments, now we can see the segments. So basically speaking, in typical use cases in Power BI, you can oftentimes meet a situation that these slicers are just, for example, placed on the left side and we have a bunch of different slicers and we can slice and dice through the product attributes or the customer attributes, etc. However, this is a very specific use case that you can imagine that you are just focusing on, let's say, the customer portfolio or the product portfolio. So no matter which slicers you would like to place it here or on the top seg segment, top section of the report, it doesn't matter. But it calls for a specific use case when this this one table should focus only on a one specific um, breakdown. Let's say the customer all the products. So we are focusing on the attributes for the customers or the products. So in that case, we can achieve a quite interesting feature. It not always be useful, but in some cases it might be useful when you can actually pick which role breakdown would you like to include in table. And at the same time, you will also get an option to filter or unfilter certain items which belongs to the segment or the country or the customer. So let's say we pick the customer as our breakdown level, as our row breakdown here. Now we cast, uh, the, the items visible here in the customer column are just the customers. And now we can quickly unselect the one which are, for instance, not important for our analysis. So let's say the first one, it's actually the one we would like to unfilter. So let's quickly scroll a little bit down and it's called the data systems. Uh, let's find it, it's here and we can just unselect and now we are analyzing the entire table all the structure without one specific uh, customer in that case you can also see that now the grand total is now summing up to 100 percent and it all depends on the logic applied to how you'd like to calculate the percentage of total because sometimes you would like to just get a percent of total which is based on like let's say on the all selected so it keeps the filter context and no matter which items you unselect, you will still get the 100%. But in, the, in that particular case, as we're analyzing the percentage share and you would like to keep the context and just remember and just relate to like the, the all customers, in that case, we might also need that situation that even if you unfilter certain customer, let's say, we still would like to see what was the percentage share, even if assuming that this items is actually selected. So it all depends on the logic you would like to apply. Both options, both approaches can be valid. It all depends. But for this particular use case, we have applied the logic when even if we unfilter certain elements, we are not summing to 100% because we would like to see how the structure would look, look like even if we assume that we are excluding certain items. So it's a combination of two things. From the one hand, we're picking the, the field of the row breakdown, and the second are we also can filter on unfilter quickly certain elements that we would like to either include or exclude. And one additional thing that I would like to show you, you don't have to necessarily use all of these free slicers always at the same time. It can be like in a combo, but it doesn't have to be like that. But the case is that you can also apply the search filter and in terms of the search filter here i actually using uh, the custom visualization it's not quite typical for me to use the custom third party uh, visualization however it's the one that i actually like it's the <clears throat> it's called the text search slicer from the data brothers it's a certified uh, custom visualization i really like that and i will just use it uh, here for the purpose of our presentation you can also uh, pick other text slicers one is also available native and uh, natively it's called the text slicer it's it also works fine i think it's still uh, miss some kind of the formatting options but i think it's just a matter of time when microsoft team will include more formatting options but for now i just wanted to show you uh, the one text slicer which is from the data brothers team uh, is a custom one but free one 
and I personally like that. So I use this one. And the one thing that I would like to show is that now we can search also by name. So of course, is the case whether we would, we would like to use only this this kind of of the slicer or also combine this one. But this use case calls for the scenario when you just want to quickly search um, by one specific name. So let's say I would like to search anyone which is uh, include include the name tech. Let's let's like this is the only an example. And now we can see all the customers which actually have the tech as the phrase of the of the partial phrase of the name. But we can also just maybe look for the one specific customer, which is in that case called called tech. You can also imagine that if you would like to have analyzing the portfolio of the products instead of the customers, you can just type whatever the product you are interested in and you will uh, you can just search it and discover and review the information. So for instance, here, even if you're searching by one specific customer, which in that case is the code tech, we can still see the percentage share. It's not 100% share. It's not like uh, reacting on to the filter context. It's not 100% because if we would analyze only one customer and we would place a percentage of grand total on a different logic, we would end up with having the 100% for the previous year share and for the actual share, the values for the actuals also as as 100%. But here we have a little bit tweaked logic, so we can we are still able to see the the previous the origin uh, share for this particular uh, customer, and we can easily erase the search option, and now we are looking at the entire portfolio. So here is actually the combination, as mentioned before, of the three slicers. You can use like two of them or just one. But in that case, I just wanted to show you some kind of the interesting combo that can be utilized, assuming that you are analyzing the, the portfolio of the customers or the attributes of the products. And one thing that I would like to show you as well during today's meeting is that for now, it's just uh, the single select uh, option, the single select selection for the field parameter. But it doesn't have to be. It can be also the multi-select. The multi-select might have a certain drawbacks in terms of how the field parameters works with the multi-select. But I will quickly uh, show you how it can work. I won't dive too much into the details regarding of the field parameters, but I would like to show you uh, how it can work on a, a general level. On high level view. So I will unselect the single view here. I will include the show select all options. And now you can see that it's actually the multi select. So let's say would only you would like to analyze the both the segments and the country. So if you pick the segment and the country, you can see that now we have the hierarchy, you can expand and now you have the segments, for instance, segments, and we have the countries below the segments. And now what is interesting is that in the search by name, slicer you can see that now we have both categories that we can use to, to search certain elements so now we have active the segments it's highlighted with a specific color but we can also click on a country and if we click on the country we can now uh, search by a specific item let's say the japan for example and if i press the japan now you can see that only the japan is filtered if we reset that and go to the segment we can input specific segment name and now we are uh, searching for the enterprise software of course it can be more useful if we have like a really lot of segments a lot of customers a lot of countries it doesn't necessarily have to be very useful if we have only a few of them as here as an example but if you can imagine you have like the hundreds of products or hundreds of customers it can be quite useful and this one additional interesting feature here is that if we have the multi-select field parameter, and if we just to be uh, just to be uh, straightforward here, we have actually applied exactly the same field parameter here for this slicer. So all of these three slicers are based based on a on the same single field parameter. So it's quite quick. Uh, we can quickly uh, customize that. We can quickly adapt. We can quickly build it. So now if we have actually the multi-select here we can actually use all of these elements as our search fields. We can also go to the customer, we can pick the country, we can go to the segments. So with the multi-select uh, field parameter selection, we have also ability to pick the field we would like to search by.
so it's quite interesting i think it might be some kind of the use cases that it will be useful but for the very standard use cases let's assume that our slicer it's gonna be uh, not a single select let's assume it's gonna be it's not it it won't be a multi-select it's gonna be a single select and it, in that case you won't see any additional fields to uh, to pick from in this search text slicer it's gonna be like the input field here without any additional thing so without like additional detailed uh, dive deep here because i will leave the next part for our next meeting but i just wanted to briefly showcase you the combination of the field parameters with a few slicer with an ability to show all the items which are corresponding to the whatever field we pick on our field parameters and we can also utilize the text slicer not necessarily that one but it's always an, an option to use the third party tools we can use the native one as well to have a, some kind of the customized experience in terms of how you'd like to search and review the data. So for now it's uh, all, and we will uh, we'll have some additional uh, things uh, to, to walk through in our next meetings, including how we can build this particular table. So take care and to the next one, bye.